welcome back to the Rugby Connection podcast, as always, for the fans, by the fans. Uh, we've got all three of us today. Harvey's on a train and Murray is got a bit of a headache. Uh, lads, how you doing? Not a, he- not a headache, just a sort of really. Oh, he's cool. got a sore throat. He's got a sore throat. How are you doing, yeah. lads? Well, you can hear it now. I'm all good. I am, It doesn't sound like I am good, but I am genuinely all good. Um, tons of rugby, which we love. And, yeah, I don't know how much to complain about. Harv, you're on a train. Elaborate, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm obviously uh, I'm I'm just coming back from Edinburgh. I did not go to watch the Scotland game, but I was watching it. I am supporting the All Blacks, of course. Um, no, it was it was it was a good weekend of rugby, good weekend of drink, just a great weekend overall. And um, I am stuck on a train, unfortunately. Happy belated, uh, happy belated birthday, Harvey. That is true. An there official Rugby Connection podcast. Happy birthday to you, Harvey. Thank you very much. I obviously got um, your birthday uh, wishes and uh, Chris Robshaw's as well. So uh, yes, that was uh, yeah. quite fun. Obviously, Chris Robshaw's below ours. Anyways, shall we get on to the rugby? Once we again, shall, please, none of us really followed the Premiership, so we're just going to quickly go over the results and then we're going to get to the juicy stuff being the internationals. So on the Friday night, Bath with a pretty shocking win over the uh, reigning champions, Leicester, 19 points to 18. I don't think anyone really predicted that one. On the Saturday, Newcastle, another bit of an upset. Newcastle beat Gloucester 27-21. And then following that, Chiefs back in their winning ways, 22-17 over London Irish. And then today we had uh, a really, really good game. Saracens versus, uh, I'm lisping, versus Northampton Saints, 45-39. A very high scoring game, but Saracens still uh, undefeated. They don't look like being beaten anytime soon. Mm. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you guys want to do predictions, but I will just go over what games we have looking forward to next week. Um, none. We don't have any Premiership next week. Is there a week off? Um, I think it's. I think it's also there worth is. noting um, that Harlequins have a game against uh, Barbarians during the ah, week. Ah, yeah, of course. And yeah. Bristol are playing uh, Springboks. So beat. Okay, Bristol. so no, no Premiership next week. Fair enough. Happy days. Well, so we'll get straight onto the juicy stuff, and I'm going to go straight into what I want to talk about straight away: the Women's World Cup. Obviously, so good. we had the final and the bronze medal match played. Uh, I'll quickly talk about the bronze medal match because pretty disappointing for Canada women's. Absolutely thrashed by France, 36-0. Um, after such a good performance for them last week, uh, really pushing England to get a defeat like that for the bronze medal. It's a bit up and down for them, but you know, credit to them for getting to the to semis uh, and to that bronze medal match anyway. Uh- I just think France were really pissed off because yeah. they edged the Black Ferns in the semis and then proper just attacked Canada from everywhere on the pitch for the whole 80. I mean, I'm just looking at the points being scored and we're pretty much having, you know, points being scored throughout the game with not many gaps. Like, yeah, just dominant performance. But on to possibly the best game of the week, maybe the best, well, I'm going to say the best game of the year, England versus uh, New Zealand, Red Roses versus Black Ferns, World Cup final, the Black Ferns win it again, their sixth World Cup. That is insane. That is unreal. What a performance. What a game. I'm actually going to double down on what you just said there. Not, I'm not saying game of the year. I am saying this is the best World Cup final ever. I'll back it. I'll back it because Christ, did this game have some up and downs? We had oh a, we had a relatively early red card. Um, mm. Obviously, uh, Portia Woodman went went down out cold, so she got taken off, and England went down a player. Um, but then from that, they still look pretty dominant. And one thing I will say, England's maul, my <laughs> God, was it devastating. It's Marley Packer. If you see her on the back of a maul. Just give them the five points because you're not stopping them. No, not at all. And they were they were mauling it like a minimum 10 metres every time. That was a real Achilles heel for the Black Ferns girls. But credit to the Black Ferns. 
out wide, they were finding space and they were scoring some lovely, lovely tries. But uh, yeah, pretty shocking. I think England were definitely the, the favourites going into the World Cup. Um, a trick, it's a tricky one because we all said at the start it was going to be a Black Friends Red Rose final. We did. But 30, 30 wins on the bounce for the Red Roses until the final. They were almost it's, untouchable. Like we said yeah. after um, even when it looked like they were struggling, they still managed to get like find those extra gears and yeah, it's, it's just mental it must to be, be like, like trying to put yourself into the shoes of the players to be on a 30 game winning streak and then that to be the game that you lose the world I know. final. <laughs> and not by much. I don't think I don't even think I mentioned the score. 34-31 to the Black Ferns. Absolute tight yeah. game. Just an absolutely brilliant World Cup final. And I think it's a it's a great cherry on the top to what this Women's World Cup has been. Oh, yeah. And I think I said it to so many people that we love for this show. I can't say much because they're not out yet. But for those naysayers and keyboard warriors that, eh, who cares about women's rugby? 45,000 care about at least care about women's rugby. Sold out at Eden Park. We care about it because we all talk about it. Anya, Gemma, everyone that actually likes rugby likes women's rugby. And I think I, yeah. I, I think what we can take away from this World Cup anyway is, you know, whatever these England women have done now, uh, regardless of, of the result of the final, it's going to be heartbreak. But what they've done is inspired a new generation you know, these are these are going to be girls that have watched the game for the first time and and want to pick it up. These have uh, these girls have become heroes, so maybe a new generation of rugby players. And we're now moving probably more into a professional era of women's rugby within women uh, within uh, years to come. So I think this is kind of the catalyst for it. And whatever the Red Roses have done, regardless of obviously the result, I was backing them obviously as an England fan for 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 days and days and days. Um, but I think what they've done now is inspired a new generation, and I think they can take away from the World Cup with with, with such an amazing job they've done. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh. I mean, the fact that now you've got household names, uh, women play, uh, women players being household names like Portia Woodman, Emily Scarrett, you know, with throughout the whole rugby community, not just women fans, everybody. Uh, yeah. yeah, really encouraging for the sport, and and really looking forward to it going forward. Oh, facts. I just want to mention one name. Go for it. Not even because of her performance in the match, although she was fantastic. But Ruby too. Did Ruby you see Tui. what she <laughs> did the crowd? Yeah. For those that don't know, she sung, I'm guessing, a native Maori traditional song. After the World Cup win, in the press conference, she grabbed the microphone, started singing, and the crowd were feeding it up and just showing it back to her. Ruby Two is a vibe. She's an inspiration. She's a legend. I can list so many adjectives to describe Ruby, Ruby Two. They don't have enough time. You never see Geordie Barrett doing that. Disgraceful that's scenes. That's true. But yeah. That's true. Anyway, <laughs> you know, obviously, massive congratulations to the Black Ferns. Condolences to the Red Roses. Or they, although you played your absolute bloody socks off. Congratulations to France for getting that bronze medal. Yes. Shall we move on to the Autumn Internationals? We had quite a few really, really good games on. Um, yes. We'll start with the first game being Ireland-Fiji. Uh, pretty comfortable win for Ireland, although Fiji, you know, had a few nice moments. 35-17 to the Irish. Um, next, my game of this week's Autumn Nations, Italy versus Australia. Italy getting a historic win over the Aussies, 28-27 with a nail-biting miss kick right at the end. Uh, Georgia versus Salmoa, a very tight one. One point, Salmoa beating the Georgians. Uh, I didn't expect that. I thought Georgia would have the, the wood over Samoa. But, uh, yeah, fair play to them. England absolutely trousing Japan, 52 points to 13. Japan looked a bit lost, and England were just too clinical. Wales versus the Pumas. Somehow Wales managed to do what England couldn't and keep Emiliano Boffelli quiet. Uh, that's pretty much the, the end of it. 20 points to 13, like I said. And then absolute heartbreak for me, 
the Springboks in an absolutely dazzling effort, fall down uh, in, in Paris, 30 points to 26, France getting the win uh, in that case. And today, Murray, you were there. What a game it was. Scotland versus New Zealand, so close to history. 23 points, 31 points for New Zealand. <sighs> it's a tough one. And then I will mention quickly, we had another semi-international going on. Barbarians versus New Zealand B team. The Barbars getting, getting it done, 35 points to 31. Nice. Anyway, going back, having a look, the first game that I want to talk about is the Azuri making history. Capuazzo, Capuazzo, he's done two tries. Absolutely brilliant uh, performance from the Italian uh, Italians. They just look comfortable for that whole game. Yeah, they did. And it's, it was actually weird to see Australia try and chase a game. And not against New Zealand. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Just, you know what I mean? Like, usually when Australia come over here and they go against, like, the middle teams, they do kind of tend to, maybe not be dominant, but they tend to be in control of it. And at LA, we're just having none of that. Like, yeah. like you mentioned, the man of the match, couple of, so two tries. I think he's only 22. and he's. He is just getting better game by game, and it is actually frightening me now. He's taken to international rugby like a duck to water. He yes, yes. is, you know, for a small guy, he's absolutely rapid. He's absolutely elusive, and ball in hand, he's he's just a, a maverick in himself. Um, I think I mentioned it um, right at the end. Australia could have sealed this game, and yes. for a young fly half coming on for his test debut. What a kick to miss. How awful must you feel? Donaldson missing uh, the, the conversion. Australia getting a try in overtime and you think it's all over for the Italians. And he misses it and the Azuri celebrates. Can, can I be very selfish with this result? Yeah. Karma. What happened two weeks ago? We had, uh, had the chance to win in the last minute. Missed a kick. Australia had the chance this time. Ha! It sucks. I love how you seem to turn a, 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 a historic moment in Italian rugby. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> no. For, Forza Azuri. On, Capozzo. Capozzo. Yeah. All day, every day. But it's, it's just a nice warm feel of knowing that it does happen uh, he's, to other teams. Mur Murray, Murray, <laughs> still goes to, Murray still goes to bed and, and, and cries over a picture of Blair Kinghorn knowing that he could have that he could have slowed that kick. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we invite Hart back this week? I'm joking. Yeah. But anyway, we'll go on to the next one. An absolute turnaround from last week for England. 52 points over Japan, a Japanese team who pushed the All Blacks all the way. Um, oh, and an England team who fell short of Argentina last week. What did they do um, to turn it around? I was, I was, I was very impressed. Um, I think England... England displayed dominance from from basically the first uh, from basically the first minute. Um, you know, if we're if we're talking statistically anyway, um, England had you know seven tries to one, six conversion, uh, six conversions to one. Um, they played incredibly, incredibly well. Um, took their chances. I mean, some of the lads who got on the score sheet anyway, um, we got. Smith, who scored two. We had Kai Porter, who scored two. Uh, Farrell was absolutely brilliant from the tee. So I think um, we had a very, very strong game. And whether Eddie's found his his best squad, if we're heading into the World Cup year, I still think we're yet to figure out. But I think we're still getting closer. Yeah, I think I think for a while now with the whole Smith at ten, Farrell at twelve, and Farrell still making most of the decisions which leaves Smith to sort of play his game. For a while, it hasn't quite clicked, hasn't quite worked, but I think in this game we saw it work because obviously we see the two tries from Smith and we see Farrell leading uh, from the front, making the decisions, making the kicks. Uh, it just all seemed to click for England today or yesterday, I should think, I say. I, I, th I think one thing with we the... Uh, the I'm so good. Thank you. <laughs> I think the one thing with the, um, with the Smith Farrell axis anyway is that... Um, while Farrell was injured, um, Smith took on quite a few responsibilities.
capabilities that I didn't think he was at least settled for. Um, he's supposed to grow into not to, not just to be forced in there. Um, so I think having Farrell missing uh, for 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 most of the year was was kind of a big blow for uh, um, for Smith in general. I think they can play a good game. To- We're losing a bit of the audio. Together. Um, there we go. You know, fa- oh, am I, am, I, am I glitching? All right. Um, no, yeah. and uh, it just allows Smith to play his own game with uh, with, with, with Farrell taking up uh, most of the control anyway. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, we're looking, we're getting close to that uh, 2023 World Cup England squad. You know, man of the match, Freddie Stewart, what a game he played. He's so secure under that high ball and his counter-attack He's a big lad and, mm. you know, he makes use of his size on the counter-attack. Uh, baby Rhino Ellis Genj also gets a try. Nice to see him. Him and uh, Carl Sinclair, absolutely dominant in the scrums. Japan were having an absolute mare of a time in the set piece. Um, just to mention, back to, back to Freddie Stewart. Um, he is the best 15 in the world. I will not take anything else. I do think he is the best 15 no, in the world. Not, wait, do you know what's how definitely you looked to me when you said that? That, that felt huh? personal. He, he looked at he Harv looked me dead in the eyes when he said that. Man, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we'll get onto it later. But there's a reason I looked at you. <laughs> oh, oh. Anyways, we'll go on to the next game. Uh, absolute heartbreak for me uh, in a match that pretty much had it all. Um, South Africa versus France. We knew it was going to be a, a big match, and it definitely, it definitely was. Right at the start on 12 minutes, not the start that the Springboks wanted, a red card for Peter Steff to toy. Um, Should we talk breaking, about that? Breaking Dante's eye sockets, I think we has come out now. Uh, with his, with his... Yeah, just a fine headbutt. Yeah. Some, you know. Somebody on Twitter, I think it was a journalist or some sort, uh, said it was like the most malicious thing he's seen on a rugby pitch. And Charles Bretz came out and went, no. <laughs> no. Like, no. Like, and it, like you mentioned it to me last night, Cam, when the game was on. If you didn't see uh, Steph Tatoit's reaction to being red carded, that broke him. That was a broken man. You saw him on the bench, he had his hand, head in his hand, he looked like he was cry, like about to cry. You know, you, you can tell that, you know, that, that, by the way, was the first ever card in his career. He's never, ever been carded wow. before. That's crazy. And, you know, I think it was nice. He went over to Dante, you know, shook his hand and everything, said sorry. But you could tell, you know, it wasn't anything malicious, but a red card nonetheless. South Africa down to 14 men. You think France are going to capitalise, and they do for a little bit. Uh, try from Cyril Bay and uh, two penalty goals from now from Ramos. Um, yeah, it's looking ominous. Oh, I think we've lost Harvey uh, for a little while anyway. Um Oh, there he is. But if anything, the red card galvanizes the spring box and they oh, no. start performing. Uh, Cheslin Colby taking the kicking reins and absolutely kicking a belter. Sia Khaleesi with a try and then Cheslin with the conversion <laughs> again. I don't know what was going on with our kickers, but it was working. I don't know, but the bigger one that caught me off guard, because uh, we all know Colby has got a kick, but we've seen it in the tone days. Briefly, granted, but it was very strange to see Faf de Klerk hit a nudge and it and it coming off very He did quick. it so casually as well. He kicked it and just walked away before it even went off. He was like, yeah, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine having that confidence when you're not the regular kicker. That's unreal. Yeah. But it does it does give us confidence in the fact that, you know, we have some kicking options that aren't Damien Willemse, although he did slot a nice one, so fair play to him. But he also had a bit of a mare of a kick as well. The kick best player in the world was red carded. He was. Anton Dupont was red carded, taking Cheslin Colby out in the air. Another one, it's not cynical. He's got his eyes on the ball. It just happens that Cheslin Colby's already in the air. Dupont's on the ground. He takes the player in the air. It's a red card. It always will be. Uh, Cheslin goes off for an HIA, so I hope he's all right. Um, but from that red card, that sort of boosts boost the box we go on uh we get in front in fact uh, yeah. everything's looking good for us we think we're going to win 
And then it all comes down to a, a Dion Fury uh, under lots of French pressure. Dion Fury gets a yellow card. And from that point forward, uh, I think I think that's what, what cost us the game because France then, um, you know, score a try. And that's all she wrote. The, I mean, the messages between me and you last night were like one of the highlights of my weekend because I got, oh shit, the toys off. And then, yes, see ya, my captain, my leader, blah, blah, blah. And then DuPont went off and you erupted because DuPont got sent off. Then you were winning and you were absolutely buzzing. Then Ramos got a penalty and you're like, wait, no, shit, this is not what we want. And oh, the emotions just coming through the message from Cam last night was top draw. Yeah, it's it's a bit of pill to swallow losing again. Um, but I was very, very happy with how the box played. Showed that we can play that running brand of rugby. Our physicality was immense. Uh, yeah. Some of those those counter rucks were just disgusting. Um, and I think if we had the full contingent of players and played like that uh, against Italy and against England now, um, you know, my hopes, yeah, are my hopes are high. But anyways, shall we move on to today's game? Uh, Murray, a little bit of heartbreak for you <clears throat> because Scotland, like we said, went down to New Zealand, but it really, really did look like Scotland were going to make history because... After a quick start from New Zealand, quick two tries, yeah. um, Scotland just said, well, hang on a minute, we're going to score two, and then we're going to start dominating you in every aspect of the game. And that oh, pretty much everywhere. continued, pretty much continued, till around the 65th minute, Jack Debsey gets a yellow, and then New Zealand take the momentum back. How, do, how does it feel to watch your team bossing the All Blacks around Murrayfield? I won't lie, it felt like it's very surreal because, like I said, it that we every picture we've had with them were that bit closer, and it did look like you got we got it's like we almost got too close today. It's the best way I can say. Yeah. I am heartbroken, like I genuinely, I genuinely just wanted to curl up and cry, not sob, not like proper cry. My heart, just I felt. It didn't help. What didn't help was how the game started. Before the ball was even touched, the great man, Scotland's favourite son, Doddy Weir, yeah, bringing the match ball out. And now, if you don't know Doddy's situation, it's it's horrific to see. You don't wish it on anyone, and to see a man that was towering on top of the game, on top of the game in the nineties, brush and Irish lion. Probably one of the best Premiership players as well. Won a Premiership with Newcastle. And just like top form, top bloke all round. And to see him, how he was today, it, it does break your heart. I never got to see Doddy play, but I did get to meet him once by sheer accident. And yeah, to see him like that, it, it was heartbreaking. And Scottish rugby's touch with the tartan number on the back. It, proper, proper emotional is the best way I can describe it. And I am going to say two men that stuck out to me for in the positive ways. I don't have anything negative to say about the boys today. They gave everything to that game. And that's for all the naysayers that, oh, we bottled it. No, we didn't. There's nothing you could do when you're a man down against the All Blacks. That's just the fact of life. But yeah. two men. One, welcome back, Finn Russell. He made that game look easy on the attack. Clinical off the kick and tee, which is what we've been needing all on. Um, and that's not me pointing the finger, just Finn is naturally a better kicker and controls the game at the tempo we need. And I feel like we've, we're just constantly mentioning him now. He now wears a scrum cap. He is our Cheslin Colby. It is Darcy Graham. He He's is uh, everywhere. He scores a try against the All Blacks, almost scores two, uh, just gets his foot put into touch. Uh, just before what would have been an amazing finish. He does a fucking front flip. And, <laughs> Fuck it know, was a front flip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, heartbreak. Anton Leonard Brown actually gets a yellow card in the 12th minute, and that's what really pushes um, uh, pushes Scotland to to take the take the lead and take the momentum. Stuart Hogg co- uh, scores the penalty try. Yes. Um, actually, that, I'm glad you mentioned him, because... I know he didn't officially score today. 
was whether his foot was in, whether his foot was in touch or went it round just saying thing. Now you're not getting it. Stuart Hogg was a different animal today. He and I know people their hearts already shake shaking, I'm shaking his, head, his head saying no. There was a few knock ons. You can't have a there's you don't get the perfect game. But I'm in, I'm intrigued now what Hard's got to say. I I I did want to I did want to mention I did want to mention Stuart Hogg for a, for a second though. Um, I just and this is not coming from a from a biased opinion. I just can't see why we used to call him the best fifteen in the world. That's harsh. That's harsh. I think today today was unfortunate. I think obviously with the the whole try situation, um, Anton Leonard Brown just um giving him a little hug there and, and denying him the, the, the right to score. Um, but other than that, I couldn't see too much um, else from him. Um, a few wasted phases, a few wasted moves. Um, other than that, I haven't been it seems like Wi-Fi is on the side of Stuart Hogg. Oh, no. Oh, no. The train can't get hard. <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm yeah. going to finish what he was saying. Um, I know, obviously, he, he mentioned on he's focusing on the rugby. People need to stop commenting on his... <laughs> I, know I, I know what point he's trying to make. I know what point he's trying to make. It's funny just watching him. I say it is, but... Actually, that is a talking point, quick coy. While Harv's <laughs> punching the camera... <laughs> I got what he's trying to say. I'm saving him because the Wi-Fi in the train is horrific, and it's not Harv's fault. We're just we're just filling in the blanks for him at this point. Fish rail services get better Wi-Fi. So basically, Stuart Hogg went on social media last week and basically just let out all this anger. And I'm actually with Hogg on this. I don't care if he's had his teeth bleached or. Whitened or whatever. If he's got a man bond with a blonde, t- who gives a shit? He yeah. can be bald and, and have no teeth for all I care. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't see how. Um, I think anyone's gonna, you know, if player changes appearance. You know, there's taking the mick. There's having a few little like, ah, look at him with his white teeth jokes and whatnot. Yeah. But when it's just <laughs> constant and whatnot, and it can affect. Uh, a player's sort of mental health and we we are big advocates for mental health and players' yes, mental health yeah. on this show. Um, and it's little things like that that get you down and, you know, also people commenting. I think he said in the in the pre-match interview that they did with him today, he said, judge me on my rugby. That's yeah. all you can judge me on is judge me on my rugby, not on my appearance. And I was like, yeah. 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 You know what? Let's just keep the man bonds going. Let's have Finn Russell. Rock a man bun. He'd look body good in it. I but don't think he has the ability. His hair has just always been that. Just always short. <laughs> Never short. changed. I would say I would say we have Shui with it, but he's already kind of he's got oh, a good Shui with a man bun. Shui with a man bun. Majestic. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> That's another player, might I say, to hear the whole of Murrayfield go. Shoo. <laughs> Every time Shoo, we got the ball. Every time. I Another mean, Edinburgh man I want to talk about. Uh, the man who got away, well, the other man who got away, uh, Duan van der Merwe. That man was running the All Blacks ragged. Why the hell did they keep kicking the ball to him? He just he I, guaranteed, I guaranteed beat the first defender and then would in at least make it five metres or so. There was at least five different plays, and wasn't making like mid, like mad meters, or but he always drew in two, three at times four all blacks just to get him down. I'm like, oh my god, what is happening? Also, yeah. and I can't believe I'm about to say this, and I feel like the world's about to stop on its axis as I say this sentence. Xander Fagerson did not disappoint me today. If you guys That's the best know, I could say. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Murray is not the biggest out of fake some man. He's uh, you know, he's said a few words in the past. We won't mention them. Um not worth it. Don't want to it. Yeah, no, I feel like um the scrums were interesting because it was sort of tit for tat. 
Uh, Scotland would get a penalty. All Blacks would get a penalty. Scotland would yeah. get a penalty. I feel like the ref was a bit too stop start in the scrums, a bit too <laughs> finicky. I feel like, like at I one point, I think his reasoning for, and he had a chat to Scooey and uh, uh, whoever was on for the New Zealand at the time, he was saying, you're binding too low. Binding to a wall? What does that mean? You're, you're binding too low. Okay. Uh, I was like, what do you mean they're binding too low? And he was like, I need you to bind a bit higher. And then when they bound again, it looked exactly the same, but it was, I, I don't get it. I'm not an expert on scrums, but... See, I don't I don't want to come on here and badmouth a referee. I get, well, we've had Ben O'Keefe on. We understand how tough it is being in that situation. But we all, all we ask for fans, uh, for France, is consistency. That's all we want. But why be very, oh, don't get me wrong, Frank Murphy actually was a brilliant referee till about the 67th, 68th minute. He was checking everything. If he was unsure, stop, was TMO it? Let me double check, let me sure the right decision. Right through. And then with about 12 minutes to go, he just went, yep, try, no, play on. That's how I might. What? what? Yeah. I also do want to say, because uh, it's a rule that has frustrated me multiple times since it's been introduced. Jack Debsey's deliberate knock-on, yellow card. I'm sorry, but that man was merely going for the tackle and he happened was... to... Yeah, he, he was... His arms are wrapping. He's not gone for the ball. The yeah. ball has just hit his arm while he's wrapping. If he actually went for a deliberate knock-on, he would have followed the ball and not the player... Yes, okay, a penalty, fair enough. It's a knock on. But how is that in any way deliberate? I don't, I don't understand. The thing I always, the thing I, I start to look for now because there's the, now this whole bit underneath the deliberate knock on that if you can, if there looks like there's a genuine attempt that you can get the ball, it's just a penalty, it's not a yellow card. But now look at the footage. Jack Dempsey is not even looking at the ball. He the is looking at the definition is deliberate. Deliberate. It's, if you were going just... for the ball, like I understand it, when you're going for the ball with one hand out and you knock it on, you've gone for the ball deliberately, you're probably not going to regather it. Fine. Yeah. Deliberate knock on yellow card. That, not deliberate. It was just a knock on. It was the same as a knock on through a ruck. You know, I don't see any difference and I don't see why it's yellow card. I don't know. It's a strange one, but overall, I am, and pardon my French, here I come, and I do apologise. Go for it. I am fucking proud. You should to be. be. Scot- to be you Scottish. Know, I, think- I am always proud to be Scottish, but. 100%. I, I, I've said it on all my social media. Win, lose, draw. Always back your team. Exactly. Do, do, In fact, this I might anger you, because you're, you're a big advocate for back your team. Do you know how many comments I had this week from Scottish supporters saying there's no way we're winning? That is mental. You're on not a, a supporter then. You're not a supporter. No, you're there you're for the good thing. You know, no I mean, I've taken back in my team to the ultimate extreme where the fact that I've actually now got a springbok on yes. my arm engraved on my body forever. But, um, right. yeah, I mean, win or lose, and especially with the springboks at the moment, losing it seems a bit more common. But like, you know, like you said, Scotland, although lost, played amazing and the boys deserve all the praise. I feel the same for the Springboks. Under the circumstances, they played amazing and they deserve all the praise. Um, Mm, 100%. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Predicts. Round three, technically four for some. Round four, three, ten, one. Round three and a half. Round three and a half. Bloody uh, world rugby with their rounds, eh? I think right, Harv just disappeared. To be yeah, honest. Harv, uh, if you guys didn't didn't sort of catch on, Harv was on a train. He's heading back home on the train. So we knew he was going to have a few connection issues. I'm glad he Dedication was here. To on, to yeah? Dedication to come on. Dedication to come on. 100%. Fair play to the boy. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's been having party celebrations, been getting drunk and everything. So... Yeah, fair play to him. Jealous. Next week, <laughs> next week. Um, okay, interesting one I've got here. Not really regular. French Barbarians versus Fiji. Just quickly, 
I'm going to say Fiji by 12. Yeah, I think Fiji's going to have to get their discipline sorted, though. That's a big thing I've noticed the last two weeks. Yeah. Uh, that Scotland game was a bit messy with the discipline, and then against Ireland, I mean, it was their Achilles heel, wasn't it? I have, I've counted. There has been, just for Fiji, no one else, there has been seven cards shown to Fijian players in the last two rounds. Yeah, it's mad. In fact, this, <laughs> is, this, this week of rugby has been the week of cards. We've had one, two, three red cards... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six yellow cards. Oh, I'm trying to think now. I'm going to be thinking. There was one, two reds in the France, France game. Well. One in there the was a red Cup and a yellow in the Fiji yeah. Ireland game. There was a yellow. Oh, there was a red in the Fiji game. Yeah, there was a red. That's four team. reds then, because I'm counting the, the World Cup final as well. Oh, God. Oh, God. There was anyway, two yellows. Anyway. There was... There was two yellows in that World Cup final, so there's three yeah. cards in that one. I'm going to say at least 11 cards were shown this weekend. Yeah, 100%. Uh, a, big one, a big one for for my boys there. I'm wearing the wrong jersey. South Africa versus Italy. Um, if we play like we did against France, but with the full contingent, uh, I don't think Italy will be able to, to match us. But I'm not taking anything away from the Italians because we saw how they... Uh, they played against Australia, um, but I'm obviously back in my boys, and I'm going to say South Africa by a strong 12 points. I'm going to stand with what I said last week. Now, if it's in the Stadio Olympico, which I've just checked, it is not. I think South Africa will win, but it'll be tighter, because Italy playing in Florence and Parma, excuse me, and just all the smaller rugby cities in Italy, they play so much better. You have diehard fans that actually care. Yeah, you, that's the thing. You you have the, the smaller rugby diehard communities, don't you? Instead of just, wait, well, we're in Rome for the weekend, so let's yeah. go to the rest of it. Which, there's I mean, nothing wrong with that. We can Harry in Rome watching the rugby. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I, if I was in Rome, I'd probably go to the rugby. But yeah. it does help when you've got just loyal, diehard fans that actually give a shit. But but so yeah, that's you, you say it's Springboks, say that when I hope we do. Um, we need a win. Uh, yeah. Wales, Wales versus Georgia. Georgia. It's going to be Wales. Is it? We, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be Wales. <laughs> I think they've taken a lot of confidence from this week's win over Argentina. So I'm going to say Wales by... going to give them by 10 points. Mm. Although I would love to see an upset. I would, but I did kind of put all claims to that to death at the weekend by be, getting beat by Samoa. And that's no disrespect to Samoa. Great team. Great captain. Friend of the show, Mike Alalatoa. But if Georgia beat Samoa last, uh, this week, I think that would have given a big momentum shift. It didn't happen. So, yeah, and it's in Wales. And for some reason, Wales just love playing at home. Like every team, but it just feels different when Wales do it for some reason. So, Wales by a... So I'm going to go 14. I think their kicking's going to be on point as well. So, yeah. Yeah. A big one for you, because it's a bit, you know, you're going to have the Battle of the Edinburgh Boys, uh, Scotland versus Argentina... King Boff versus many of his Edinburgh teammates. All his friends. <laughs> All his buddies. Um, he's pretty much Scottish at this point. Yeah. How are you That's feeling about that game? It's time to get revenge. I did say last week it's time to make history. We didn't make history. Unfortunately, I'm gutted. I'm, so crying, I'm, I'm dying inside. I'm trying to be professional as I can about this. Now you know how it feels to lose to Ireland oh. once. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I did say we were going to make history, but then now I want all that emotion pushed into next week. Argentina should not have beat us in the summer. And yes, they're a very good side. They beat the All Blacks, they beat England this year. But like on paper, you should not lose the best of three series against Argentina. Yeah. So we're at Murrayfield, 67,000 strong. As much as we love Boff, Boff, you're the enemy next week. 
because Scotland are getting their revenge. If you can do what Wales did and keep Buff quiet and keep him off the kicking tee and keep the penalties low, I think you're happy. I think you're laughing. That's why I'm going to say Scotland. I'm going to say Scotland by a, tr- a converted try. That's fair. I'm going to go Scotland by five. And that's no disrespect to the boys. I, I would love to just... I always love it when it's like Bella's Revenge and we just run away with it. I love it. <laughs> I love well, stuff yeah. like that. But, like the All Blacks did to Argentina. Yeah. Pro- get proper pissed off with it, yeah. But I'll, I'm being very respectful to Argentina because you can't sleep on them. And if you keep the penalty, if you keep the penalty count down to a minimum, it makes the job so much easier. If you're starting to give away penalties, both the way he's played now, can nudge it from anywhere. So I'll say Scotland by five, Scotland to the win, they get the revenge and end the series on a high and you'll still get melts asking for Gregor Townsend's head, which I can't be bothered with. Yeah. Now, a, a 2019 World Cup semi-final rematch, England versus the mighty All Blacks. So this is the first time since the World Cup. This is the first time these two teams have played since the, the, the World Cup semi-final. And obviously we knew what happened there, 19 points to seven in favour of England. I know, Harv won't shut up about that. <laughs> uh, funny, yeah, funny Harv's not here to talk about this one, actually. Uh, thank I know. God, thank God, in fact. <laughs> no, we do love Harv. We are, just, we are just joking. We do love Harv. Yeah, first. we we do. Um, um I don't know, see, because All Blacks were getting bullied a bit by Scotland until the yellow card sort of gave them momentum back. Yeah, but we bullied bullied England the last four out of five, so that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but also England absolutely (laughs) trousing Japan and Japan being a team who really, really pushed New Zealand. Don't do what I did, because this is what got me in trouble last week. You've got to figure it out in my brain. (laughs) I, I... said very confidently on TikTok that Japan was going to beat England based on England not doing well against Argentina and Japan doing very well against the All Blacks. Did that happen? No. 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 no it so, not. but I'm going to go for New Zealand by four. Oh, by four. Um... I'm a bit, I'm a bit evil and I like seeing the Kiwis lose sometimes. Uh, so I'm going to go for England by six. I can see that happening. I definitely I can see that. I think Farrell's kicking is... It'd be interesting of the kicking tee because you've got Farrell and Jordy Barrett, both extremely good kickers. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Now, a team that I so desperately want to see lose, Ireland versus a team who so often loses... Australia. Um, you know how weird this game could actually turn out to be? Yeah, this is going to be a hard one because I can see the Aussies winning, but then I can't at all. Oh, I, I'm in two minds. I'm the same as you. But so just before I give my prediction, can we just talk about how actually nuts like international rugby is at the moment? You've got Australia beating Scotland. They then get beat by Italy. they get absolutely whacked by um oh no they beat some more don't matter but you, you get what I mean like as these teams beat that team got, and that team yeah. were humped by the as you've got Argentina beating England everyone's beating everybody literally the top ten and also might I say which is very very exciting Italy are so so close to being in the top ten come on let that happen because let it happen that- I feel like that's been a big issue with the whole should they be in the Six Nations or not because we're not in the top 10. See if they're in the top 10. Everyone will just shut up. If they beat South Africa next week, they're in the top 10. But uh, I'm not going to... I don't want them to. They can stay I mean, in the top 10 for a little while longer. Well, wait a minute. So the, I've got, Nations. the best way I've put it is Scotland have beat England. England were beat by Argentina. Argentina were beat by Wales. Wales were beat by New Zealand. And it just kind of all floats in. It's just a circle, isn't it? It's just a mess. And a good, it's a good mess. It's a good mess. It's a really good mess. And that's why... Ireland by why six. Sorry. Do I predict the upset? It depends. Go on. Okay. 
it depends what team Australia put out. Because if they put out the same team as they did against Italy, they lose. If they run their big guns again, I want to say Australia by three points. The safe option, I know, I know it's a safe one, but I'd really like to see Ireland lose just because <laughs> Ireland beat the Springboks and then Munster the bastards. Uh, we haven't actually m- mentioned it. They beat South Africa A, which was unexpected and embarrassing um because it's monster but anyway <laughs> that's a weird way to put it remember monster went like full whack because they've not had a urc game in two weeks yes i understand that but i get you I monster in the urc so far have been shocking they have and hope and i know it's not to do with the league but hopefully this actually actually not hopefully because they've got edward mccormick in december don't do it stay getting beat <laughs> stick to that yeah. After after the second of December, you could do what the hell you like. I don't care. <laughs> but just keep playing bad than now. Yeah. What are you um, saying with the Ireland Australia game? Um, I said Ireland by six. I was. Uh, I don't know because again, it's probably going to be Ireland, isn't it? It's probably going to be Ireland. There's three. There's three scenarios running through my head right now. Don't say a draw. I'm not, no, 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 no. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> well, technically, yes. Ireland win, Australia win, or a draw. That's 10 to how it goes. The three, scenario, no, the three scenarios in my head is Australia steal a win, like, so just Ireland scrape a win, or Ireland just run away with it. I can see it being the latter, but I really want it to be Australia. Could we talk about the potential weirdness of what probably will happen? Mark Hansen. Mark Hansen scores. Oh, Mark Hansen playing against his uh, uh, probably surely playing against some of his own br- uh, old Brumbies teammates. Not even just playing against, scoring against. Mark's on fire right now. He is. He's on fire. He's in the same sort of well, maybe not quite the same level as Darcy Graham, but in terms of international rugby, he seems to be scoring for fun. Well, I yeah. got I got tears to my eyes as from a comment earlier because somebody commented that Darcy Graham is the best winner in the world and it was not me and I love it um, it's something that I would never admit to your face but it's in the back of my head <laughs> what does that mean? why wouldn't you admit it to my because face? I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of me saying that Darcy Graham is you know I don't know if I could have that ego knowing that Darcy Graham's won of the best wingers in the world and Amelia Van and Amelia Anobaselli King Boff is one of the best players, place kickers, all around good guys in world rugby at the moment. Just a top bloke. He is. He is just a top bloke. Anyway, enough about Amelia Obafelli because we talk about him too much here. It's actually an addiction that we have. Let's France, that, Japan. Let's that France, Japan, France. That's <laughs> not. I'm not even. I can't. I can't give Japan the credit after they let me down so bad last week, and that's me being polite. <laughs> but no, let's just hear me out. When <laughs> France went to Japan, uh, it was a fairly close series, especially that second game. But France, obviously playing not their strongest side, do France in this game just say, actually, you know, screw Japan. We're just going to give them the whole DuPont, Untermark, Gale, Fiku, everything, Jonathan Dante, all of the good players, and trouse them? Or will they play a few of their, you know, bench players and a few of the players that wouldn't usually get the cap? And could that lead to maybe a bit of a better game? I'll meet you halfway. Well, because DuPont's likely going to be suspended. Don, Dante, yeah. you said he broke his eye socket. So he's out. He, well, he's surely, out. surely he can't play. So you got, okay, so you got Fiku and Moyafana then in the midfield. Tell you what, you could bring on that flanker that came off the, on the wing. Oh my God, what what's his name? <laughs> Hang on, because I have, uh, he plays for La Rochelle? Uh, yeah. 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 I think, but yeah. He plays for La Rochelle. What? How do you have a back rower who can just go on the wing and be the best winger on that field? 
I don't know. I, I, I didn't catch me. I didn't catch my attention straight away. And it wasn't until, like, he got tackled, and the way the camera was filming, it said number 21. I was like, wait, sorry? Yeah. Eh? And then I looked yeah. at it, it was a 6 2 spot. I was like, sorry, you got a back row on the wing. That is an absolute weapon to have because that makes the 6 2 split so, like, there's been rumors about it being potential for the Springboks with Quagga Smith maybe being able to fill, it, uh, fill, uh, fill in the centers as well. <laughs> Because of his sevens background, of course, yeah. But to actually see it in play in an international test game and to see it work so well, France have got a weapon there. They have, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go France. I think they're just too. I think they're going to get win number thirteen, which just is insane considering like that is a feat on its own. They are miles away from the Red Roses streak. Yeah, miles away. But I think if we put it into the context of the men's game at the moment being so everyone's beating everybody where I don't think the women's game is quite there. You've still got the front runners in the women's game mm-hmm. in the men's game at the moment. Everybody's being everyone. Every team is, I'm not going to say so inconsistent, but you understand what I mean. It's, in, it's yeah. a lot of inconsistency, everybody beating everyone. And for France really- to sort of step out of that and still be on a 13 game winning streak. How have they not been beaten yet? They were so close to being beaten last week, but they still managed to pull off the win. I've got a quick question for you, just to end up, just to finish off as a topic. Has France peaked too early? France and Ireland, maybe. Um, in front of a home World Cup. Oh, I don't know, you know. I can I can honestly see France getting another Grand Slam this year. See, I can see them slack off in the Six Nations and maybe get that fire what again for the world cup yeah potentially but i think we saw them get you know massive wins they went you know uh, what was it four from four in last autumn nations then they went on to get the grand slam then they went on got a series win in japan and now they've beaten um the spring box you know I don't know. I they don't, I don't look know. like stopping. That's what I'm saying. They don't look like stopping. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to France as well. Yeah. I'm going to say France by 15. Yeah, um, I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's it. Like we said, there's no no URC next week, no URC this week, no Premiership next week. Uh, Wellesley's well, International is on. It's probably the best because obviously URC... You know, half the players are internationals anyway. Um, I am so glad they made that decision at the start of the year. Yeah, because as we see, I think we discussed it last week in the Premiership, the games are a bit more, there's going to be a few more upsets, a bit more inconsistency in the Premiership. Not, even, not even just that. It's just, and it's no, it's nobody's fault. It's no. just the way the world works. Yeah. When you see that all the big boys are away and you've got, 15 youngsters, five of which are making their debut. You will look at a team show, who's that? Yeah. It's not their fault. You have to get your debut somehow. But yeah. I, don't, I, just, I don't know. It's a very weird... When thing. is the URC back, actually? I found out by our latest guest. Go for it. 24th of November. 24th of November. Ah... So not this week, next week. Next week, the uh, URC returns. The next, next week. Well, you've heard my head by saying that. But yeah, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as I call him the Edinburgh juggernaut because he's an absolute monster, but such a lovely bloke off the pitch. Cam, do you want to tell our viewers who it is? Because he, he's proud that you're a blocker. Yeah, he's proud of my tattoo. Leon De Bruyne, what a player. Uh, obviously played for the Cheetahs, played for Edinburgh. Go check out the interview. Uh, like Murray said, absolute legend of a guy. Uh, he's he's proud of me for being a Springbok supporter. Yes, he loves it. Thank you for that. I even said I, I butchered the town that you're from. Nelspreit or Nelspreit, Mpumalanga, or what's it called now? Mbombela. Mbombela. Yeah, it's got a new name. But, but else, um, even Lewin loved the fact that that's where you're from. I like it. I like it. But then, 
and just only don't like the fact you're a Sharks fa- fan, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and he probably won't like the fact that I, d- I dislike the cheaters greatly. <laughs> I wouldn't tell him that because he will rip you to well, shreds. I do have a cheater on my arm, so. But that is just is that not just like a general cheater? Not that's just a general know. cheater. It's not. It's not a. It's not a free state cheater. It's just a, a normal, not dickhead cheater. <laughs> that's a city cheater. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> a spray cheater. Yeah, well, well, we've got that, and I'll. Well, like Cam, because my voice is still very sore, so Cam's been doing all the heavy left. He, Cam has been the artist of, uh, of RCP this week. I have been, and uh, I shall continue being uh, the namesake of Ardi Salveya, the body, same everything of Ardi Salveya. But yeah, guys, uh, cheers for watching again. You know, tuning every week uh, means an awful lot to us if you go follow our socials. Uh, we're all on TikTok, go check us out, uh, Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn, although I don't quite know how that works. Go check us out. Um, you know, watch us on YouTube, Spotify. Drop a like, drop a comment. You know, we're always interested in getting your guys' feedback, and also, you know, just just talk to us about some rugby because this is what this podcast is all about. But yeah, you know, another week gone, uh, and we'll see you again uh, next time. Cheers.